Module 2, Locally-Led Adaptation to Climate Change. Introduction to the Modules and Objectives. This module will outline the reasoning and fundamental concepts behind allowing communities and stakeholders to take the lead in adapting to local conditions. The aim is to ensure that these individuals and groups have full ownership of the adaptation measures being put into practice in their specific regions. This approach will empower local communities to implement sustainable and efficient strategies to address the impacts of climate change at the grassroots level. Humans have been adapting to climate change right throughout our evolutionary ladder. Today, we will be talking about three main things. The first one is climate change and its causes. This shall be followed by the effects of climate change. After that, we will be talking about the role of the community in climate change adaptation. What is climate change? The Earth has experienced shifts in temperature and weather throughout its history. This is known as climate change. However, this is happening at a faster and more alarming rate, as of right now, due to anthropogenic activities. IPCC recounts that this anthropogenic influence of climate change began in the mid-1800s, with the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, and continues to worsen through the years. We cannot deny that our planet is getting hotter and hotter. We are experiencing global warming. But how did this happen? Human beings are the number one culprit. Our activities produce greenhouse gases, which include carbon dioxide and methane. These gases become trapped in our atmosphere, which leads to an increase in temperature. What human activities produce these greenhouse gases? Burning of fossil fuel contributes to this the most. We use fossil fuel such as oil, natural gas and coal for our energy needs. According to the Center for Climate Change and Energy Solutions, or C2ES, most of the fossil fuel we burned for energy in 2013 was for electricity and heat, transportation, and manufacturing and construction. Aside from energy, we also use this fuel for industrial purposes, agriculture, land use change, forestry, and waste. Most greenhouse gases are produced on a larger scale. All humans play a role in it too. The amount of greenhouse gases being produced and trapped in the atmosphere is predicted to only increase. If this continues, our global situation will only worsen. The United Nations listed eight major effects of climate change, namely increasing temperatures, warming rising oceans, extreme weather, drought, changes in specific characteristics, insufficient food, risk to health, displacement and poverty. All these effects are not mutually exclusive. They are interrelated and one effect leads to another. Have you ever felt that our weather is getting hotter? Summer seems to be more scorching, winter seems less like winter. The continuous increase in temperatures opens a door to other effects. Ocean levels rise due to ice melting. More populations will be at risk of flooding and storm surges. Rising ocean levels also erode sandy beaches. Beaches are not only for recreation, but they also protect inland areas, and their erosion will result in storm surges and flooding. Warm oceans also result in extreme weather. If our oceans continue to be warm, we can expect more storms to happen. Climate change was found to be a probable link with the increasing intensity of tropical cyclones. While we experience worse storms, the Earth is also becoming drier thus the occurrence of drought in other areas. The increase in temperature enhances water evaporation, drying out the soil and vegetation and resulting in water shortage. Although drought is a natural part of our climate cycle and is meant to happen after periods of time, it is alarming that recently, droughts have been happening more frequently. This can affect our water and food supply. Climate change not only affects our waters, but also the fauna. Many species are unable to adapt to the changing environment. Climate change can lead to the spread of diseases among species and lead to degradation of habitats, resulting in loss of species. Animal species may also experience changes in ecology, behavior, physiology, and genetics. Scarcity of food is another effect of climate change. We have discussed how climate change affects vegetation due to drought. Even extreme weather may have an influence on crops. We also have talked about the impact of climate change on species. Warm temperature may destroy habitats, especially that of marine animals. Hence, food supply may not become sufficient for our growing population. This means that more people will become hungry and malnourished, and human health will be more at risk, with less access to safe drinking water and nutritious food supply. Climate change also results in displacement and poverty. The United Nations Refugee Agency stated that the climate crisis is a human crisis. Like other species, humans may not be able to easily adapt to the changing environment. Humans are also not exempt from experiencing the harsh effects of disasters, with extreme weather causing more than 20 million people worldwide to move away from their homes. 
What is important to note as well is that climate change affects people differently. Vulnerable people, including the poor and those settling in disaster-prone areas, including women and girls, experience worse impacts. They will find it difficult to recover. As such, many people remain in poverty. The world has experienced climate change throughout its existence. The only difference now is that it is happening more frequently and more extremely. Next, let us talk about the role of the community in climate change adaptation. The Principles of Locally Led Adaptation If we look around us, we see that there are actions that address climate change. We are doing something for the Earth. We are part of the solution. To know what else we can do, let us discuss first what climate change adaptation is. The United Nations defines it as changes in processes, practices, and structures to moderate potential damages associated with climate change. It means finding solutions and implementing actions to address current and future impacts. Every actor, from the government to the community, plays a role in this. We have to take into account each actor's experiences and capacity for an effective strategy. There is no single method to do this. However, it is important that we engage different sectors. We have to include public and private sectors, civil society, and especially the communities. The role of the community is highlighted even in environmental governance. Some of the key researchers for environmental governance are Maria Carmen Lemos and Arun Agrawal. In their 2008 research, Lemos and Agrawal defined environmental governance as a set of regulatory processes, mechanisms, and organizations through which political actors influence environmental actions and outcomes. Although the government plays a big role in it, the government is not the sole actor. There are communities, businesses, and non-governmental organizations too. This is to say that in environmental governance, other actors may influence the policies, decisions, and actions we make for the environment. In this context, we can appreciate the communities more. They are directly affected by whatever decisions are being made for the environment. They will also feel the effects of our actions for climate change or the lack thereof. Thus, their voices need to be heard in governance. They will be the ones to say if businesses or the government are exploiting the environment. They could also dictate what needs to be done to protect our Earth. To achieve this, we need to first make their voices more heard. Climate change adaptation should start from the community. We acknowledge the need for the community to have the capacity to protect itself from the impact of climate change. The Locally Led Adaptation, or LLA, is a growing movement that empowers communities. It sees local actors and communities as leaders in governance. In LLA, the value of local knowledge and expertise to address climate risk is acknowledged and creates an enabling environment for equitable access to power and resources for local actors, particularly those who are on the front lines or have been directly affected. They initiate decisions on strategies for adaptation. These local actors include local government units, local enterprises, community-based organizations, households, and individuals. The World Resources Institute, or WRI, stated that LLA recognizes the value of local knowledge in addressing climate change risks. Local actors at the forefront will be empowered and given access to resources in resilience building. It requires shifting the authority and control of resources to local actors. Local institutions are also strengthened to become more exclusive and responsive. Governance and financing processes in LLA require putting priority on the agency of local community members who are on the front lines of climate change impacts and are knowledgeable on local solutions for adaptation. Furthermore, a transformative approach to address changing the status quo related to power dynamics is needed, and actors as well as implementers need to be willing to face significant changes and deviation from the usual. According to the World Resources Institute, the Global Commission on Adaptation developed eight principles of locally-led adaptation, namely, one, devolving decision-making to the lowest appropriate level. 2. Addressing structural inequalities faced by women, youth, children, people with disabilities, people who are displaced, indigenous peoples, and marginalized ethnic groups. 3. Providing patient and predictable funding that can be accessed more easily. 4. Investing in local capabilities to leave an institutional legacy. 5. Building a robust understanding of climate risk and uncertainty. 6. Flexible programming and learning. 7. Ensuring transparency and accountability, and 8. Collaborative action and investment. We will explore each one of them. First on the list is devolving decision-making to the lowest appropriate level, or the local actors. Local institutions and communities should have more direct access to finances and decision-making. They should be able to define, prioritize, design, and implement necessary adaptation measures. 
By allowing the community to plan and decide on their own, we are ensuring that their strategies will be fit for their needs. Second is addressing structural inequalities faced by vulnerable sectors. These sectors include women, youth, children, people with disabilities, people who are displaced, indigenous people, and marginalized ethnic groups. Based on what we have learned earlier, climate change affects people differently. It affects vulnerable sectors more. People belonging to these groups are less likely to voice their opinions or have their voices heard at all. LLA seeks to be inclusive and looks beyond the barriers built between groups. Everyone could share valuable insights on what actions they can take for climate change. Third is providing patient and predictable funding that can be accessed more easily. Local climate change strategies will not be achieved unless proper financial support is provided. These sources of funds shall last long for various local projects. People in need should also have easy access to it. If we want immediate action, climate change finances should not have a difficult time reaching those in need. Fourth is investing in local capabilities to leave an institutional legacy. Communities have their own resources, including their knowledge and expertise. These can be used for adaptation strategies. Tapping these resources will enable them to trust their own capacity to fight climate change. People will feel less helpless amidst the changing times. They may also become less reliant on others for help. By improving the capabilities of local institutions, people will understand climate risks better. The solutions and adaptation initiatives that will be developed can last longer too. Fifth is building a robust understanding of climate change and uncertainty. Unless communities and local leaders understand climate change, LLA will not be effective. Linking local, traditional, indigenous, and scientific knowledge is necessary to make the foundations of communities stronger. This may enable resilience in whatever scenarios they face. Sixth is flexible programming and learning. The effects of climate change can be unpredictable. Local institutions need to be equipped and prepared for changing scenarios. Thus, becoming flexible is necessary. WRI noted that this can be done through robust monitoring and learning systems. Flexible financing and programming will help too. Seventh is ensuring transparency and accountability. Michael Johnston explained the two concepts in 2002 in a paper entitled Good Governance, Rule of Law, Transparency, and Accountability. Transparency means making information available and understandable for the public. Accountability means following established rules based on acceptable processes and outcomes. It involves checks and balance. Being transparent and accountable builds trust among stakeholders. When it is clear what needs to be done or what is lacking, members of the community will be able to help in the processes better. Last but not least, the eighth principle is collaborative action and investment. Fighting climate change could not be done by only one person. Lemos and Agrawal said that the involvement of multiple stakeholders is necessary for successful governance strategies addressing climate change. The same can be said for LLA. WRI explained that collaboration across sectors and levels needs to be established to align initiatives and funding. This will also prevent duplication of efforts. By working together, different local stakeholders may do more for their communities to adapt to climate change. With the world on the brink of disaster due to climate change, it is time to act. Thus, SDG 13 on climate action provides guidelines through its various indicators on what to target to achieve the goals. This needs concerted efforts not only by government agencies and other organizations, but also by the communities themselves. Thus, LLA can help propel countries to achieve SDG 13. This concludes our discussion for this module. We hope that this has enlightened you, not only about climate change, but also about the role of the community in it. Let us take action now before it becomes too late for our planet. Thank you very much for listening.